I just discovered there's an old abandoned bomb shelter that was built during the Cold War in my area, just over an hour's drive away. And despite never having been there before, I wanted to stay the night there and see what would happen. And I really had no idea what I was about to get into. So of course, as a precaution, I decided to go with a friend. Since we'd be spending the night, we wanted to make it an enjoyable trip. We brought with us a tent, some sleeping stuff, even a deck of cards and some things to do while we were there. Now we weren't sure what exactly to expect. After all, this is essentially just an abandoned cave. So we had to make sure that we had everything necessary to make sure we were safe. We got some bear spray, lighters, and headed out to get some food. We wanted to have some snacks on hand just to make the whole experience enjoyable, which looking back somehow made the entire thing worse. But before we set out, the most important thing for us to get was enough light. So we picked up a flashlight and a couple lanterns to make sure that we'd be able to see no matter how dark it got. We also thought to pick up some candles just to add to the mood of the shelter. And after getting everything packed up and ready, it was time to set off. The drive was just over an hour and we knew we'd get there just a bit before sundown. I was getting really hungry and I couldn't wait to start the hike so I could eat something along the way. We eventually made it to the small little parking lot that was kind of tucked out of the way, and we started off to find the shelter, which was luckily only a 20 minute hike. We started walking, and I pulled out a protein bar, which I just bought, while admiring the beauty of the scenery around us. There was a lot to carry, our bags definitely weren't light, and there was a few times we kind of got lost along the way. But sure enough, after about 20 minutes, we finally reached the opening. We could tell it was getting dark, and we didn't have much service. Inside the cave, it was completely gone. But we turned on our lights and got ready to explore. And this is where everything starts to get interesting. Hello! As we started to walk around, we could see writing and drawings on the walls of the cave. It had kind of a musty smell of minerals and cigarette smoke, and I wasn't sure how deep it went. As soon as we made our first corner where we couldn't see the entrance of the cave anymore, everything was completely black. And at this moment, I realized this would be the perfect spot for animals to hide out. So before we got too comfortable, we needed to make sure that we were alone. We walked all throughout the shelter, and we found a couple of surprising things. The graffiti on the walls was really interesting, and we noticed a few pipes sticking through the roof. We discovered that the shelter had two different pathways. Our plan was to set up our tent and stay the night. There were some loose rocks on the floor in all of the rooms, but there was something really creepy in the second. Holy. The second room had a huge piece of graffiti on it that looked like a demon, and right next to it was titled The Sleepwalker. This was far from the scariest thing that happened that night. We took some more time to explore around the area, and soon we were going to set up the tent. Meanwhile, though, as we were walking around, my throat was feeling a little bit tight, almost as though I was having an allergic reaction. The cave was starting to cool down a little bit, and it was starting to get darker outside. Yet I figured this would be a really cool trip. We had all night to make this place our home, and there were a ton of things to do. At that moment, I was just excited to relax and play a few card games. Games. But here was where the problems began. After a bit of time, my throat didn't feel better. It felt a bit worse, which I didn't understand. It felt like an allergy, and I'm allergic to nuts, but I didn't eat anything with nuts in it. Well, I mean, the protein bar said it was made in the same factory as nuts, but there's a lot of foods that say that. Besides, that's just there for legal reasons, in case there's a small trace, but a small trace shouldn't affect me, and here's why. If you've seen some of my other videos, you might know that my nut allergy used to be very, very bad. So bad, in fact, that it could easily kill me, so I decided to slowly expose myself to see if I can cure it. This was almost a year ago and I've made a lot of progress. So much in fact that it actually might have just saved my life a few days before when I had a slice of cake that I didn't realize had nuts in it. So a trace shouldn't hurt me. It will go away like it always does. I was just excited to get the tent set up so I can go inside and eat and make my throat feel better that way. Yeah. But then I suddenly felt my reaction get a lot worse. And I was still confused what I was actually reacting to. Then I realized the worst part. I didn't have my EpiPen. Considering these were all foods I've eaten before, it didn't cross my mind to bring it. But now I was in a cave in the middle of the mountains with a very low cell service. It was already getting pretty dark and it was only going to get darker. We were a 20 minute hike away from the car and from there I didn't even know where the closest hospital would be. Immediately after setting up the tent, I told my friend Paul we had to leave. While there's a chance that this could pass, the longer we waited, the harder it would be to get back. So we packed back up and got ready to hike back down. On the way back, my skin started to feel really hot even though I was shaking and cold. I had a huge heavy backpack that I felt was strangling me the entire time, even though it wasn't. The reality was my throat was tight because of the reaction and I needed to make sure it didn't close. This was by far the scariest part of the trip because for all I knew, the nearest hospital could still be an hour-long drive. And it would have been if we went back to my city, but fortunately for us, there was one just 20 minutes away. My friend Paul drove us to the hospital because it wouldn't be safe for me to. Because I've been exposing myself, this wasn't the worst reaction I've had in my life and was able to wait until we 
got there, but also might have been the issue. When I got there, I walked up and told them that I was having an allergic reaction and they immediately got me to a doctor. I told them everything that happened, including my exposure to my allergies, and they gave me some steroids and antihistamines, as well as a shot of epinephrine to make me feel better. But it didn't go away right away. I had my blood pressure taken and a constant check on my pulse. After about 30 minutes, I wasn't feeling any better, so they gave me another shot of epinephrine. I had to stay there for several hours and eventually it did start to feel better. This was my first time going to the hospital in years and I learned why I had the reaction. As I mentioned earlier, just a few days ago, my allergy exposure might have saved my life. That slice of cake had way more nuts in it than I've ever consumed at one time. After this event, I was super excited to continue this exposure because it's proved that it's helping. And while it does in the long run, my body right now is really sensitive because of what I've had in this short period of time. Sensitive enough that even a small trace of nuts might have been enough to set it off. The doctor recommended I take a few days off from allergy exposure before getting back into it to let my body recover. But I will get back into it and I will cure this allergy even if it takes several more years. And I'll also make sure I have my EpiPen. Moral of the story is, be careful. But also understand that we as people are capable of a lot of things. And my mission on this channel is to prove that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Speaking of all in your mind, I'm working on a new clothing brand called Exactly That. You could subscribe to the email list in the link down below. And while you're there, feel free to check out my socials.